Day. The Saturday just after the Feast of Tiffany, we were drinking in Raleigh. And there was a few considerations between the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost in them. And the word Epiphany means the divine manifestation and that God shows himself. God shows himself. Remember that when God, St. John on the cross tells us, when God created the sun, when God created the earth, when God created all things, he actually showed forth his divinity. God shows forth every aspect of his infinite goodness. St. Thomas Aquinas says, God could not make any one infinite thing. Therefore, he made an infinite number of good things. An infinite number of wonderful things, an infinite number of holy things. That's what God did. God did not make any one thing that was perfectly good, but all things together showed all the different signs of his perfection. And so, the, each part of the universe is a different, different way of showing forth God's manifestation. So epiphany is in fact found in everything. The sun, the light of God, the lion, the strength of God, the dove, the simplicity of God, and the innocence of God. What, that, what we have the feast of epiphany inside of man. Divine manifestation. God has been to show forth his, his self in a most special way inside of man. The outside magnificence of God is shown in all other things. But God wants his inside magnificence, which is infinitely more wonderful, to be shown especially inside of man. And God knows, God loves, and God builds. God knows, loves, and creates. God knows all true, and that is what he is. God loves the great goodness that is inside of himself, and the goodness of his creation, and God creates. God takes nothing, and from it makes all things. And he wants that, those, that triple divine manifestation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost to be shown inside of man. And so when God becomes man, when God became man, he wanted himself to be shown inside of man in his very nature. And hence, the very first thing he created in man is a family, which has three parts. Just like God is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost manifest what, are, are, are what God is. The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God, but there are not three gods, but only one God. And, the, and God's true is, is, is in God's love, and God's infinite goodness, and all that He is is found in these three persons that are three but one God. Three but one. So there are three persons and one God. Amen. Yeah. So in any case, in this, in this, in the, uh, in this divine manifestation, you just pick them up. Yeah. Yeah. So but in any case, there are three persons in the one God, right? In this divine manifestation. So when God made the, made man, He made him a social being. We are not made to be alone. Even the hermits were never alone. When they said they were alone, they were alone with God. They were with the angels. St. Mary Magdalene lived alone in a cave for many, many years. And every day she elevated into heaven. She was elevated in a very high uh, the, uh, the levitation. She went levitated up to the level of the clouds. And there she communicated with the angels and the saints and she was never completely alone. So something about man. What did God first say about man? God created Adam by himself. And he wanted to show, how does God show himself inside of man? Where is epiphany inside of man? In the very beginning, God created Adam most beautiful, most perfect, most wonderful, without any original sin. But then Adam went around and saw a beautiful world. And he came back to God and said, God, I love this beautiful world you made for me. And I, I'm ready to do the three tasks that you gave me to do, and to take care of the garden, to name things as they are, take care of the garden, rule the earth, but I, 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 and there is no creature like unto myself with which I can share what I am and what I know and what I love. And then God said about man, it is not good for man to be alone. It is not good for man to be alone. He wanted there to be something social in the very nature of man. And this part of God 
is kind of missing the other creatures. That God, man, when he comes into a woods, he, he sees that the woods are beautiful, the woods are trees, are wonderful, there's grass, but it doesn't have something higher. So he takes the wood and he makes it into a house. He takes the land and he plows a field and he changes it. He elevates it to the use of man. He elevates it to a higher use. He builds it up. He makes it more wonderful than it was when he came. He is not supposed to just come and leave things as they are. He's supposed to come and build. He's supposed to come and share. Share his mind, share his heart, share his body, share his things with, with the world around him. He is not good for man to be alone. Now God created man to be not be alone. And then he, they put Adam to sleep. And then from the side of Adam he made Eve. And now man can begin to be complete. But then there will be children. And then you will have a kind of a blessed trinity inside of man. There will be the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the blessed trinity. There will be the Father, the Mother, and the children, and the family. And these three are one. That the, that, that the father, the mother, and the child will be, what are they supposed to manifest? Different aspects of the goodness and beauty and truth and wonder and magnificence that is God. And they are supposed to do it in a human way. Because what did Adam do? Adam looked around the world around him and he saw, this is a beautiful world. It's a wonderful world. But I want to share what I am. I want to spread what I am. I want it to grow. I want it to increase. And hence God made a command to Adam and Eve when he created them. Increase and multiply and people and subdue the earth. Bring go to the earth and the ends of the earth and plant humanity and, and, and the goodness of man, which was created by God to return glory to God. Spread it to the goodness to the, to the world. Then Adam decided to commit an original sin and Eve decided to commit an original sin and bring the devil into the picture, and bring sin into the picture. But then God said, no, I will mirabilius reformasti. I will more wonderfully recreate man. And so he did that by, by our Lord Jesus Christ and his Holy Mother. And what did they do? On the cross, the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Lord Jesus Christ, what was their thought? What were they thinking about? Jesus Christ is a real man and a reflection of God. He is God, and as God, he is God. But his humanity is really human. And what did he do? He looked at the world around him and saw there was not God. God was not in humanity. Man was living in sin. And ugliness was all around him. And he said, it's not good to be alone. Jesus Christ does not want to be alone. He was hanging on the cross. And as he hanging on the cross, he looked down and said, woman, behold thy son. This is only the beginning. These fools, these people of the, of the devil, they think it's the end. They think it's the very end of the Catholic Church now, in the year 2021. They think it's the end of Christianity. They thought it was the end of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. But what did he say to his father? Father, in thy hands I commend my spirit. And what is the spirit? It's the human spirit that he's going to commend into, the hand, into his father. His divine spirit is always there. He's going, to, he's going to commend his human spirit. And that human spirit does not want to be alone. How does God manifest himself in humanity? Man does not want to be alone. And how does he manifest inside of the family and inside of man in a special way? It's in the whole in the family. That man is meant to go out and people the earth and bring God where he is not. That's what's supposed to happen. And so God created this beautiful thing called the family to manifest the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost that man should not be alone. And what should be our thoughts right now as we're in this great crisis in the church, crisis in our country, crisis in the world, as the church gets worse and worse, the country gets worse and worse, the world gets worse and worse. What was Jesus Christ thought as he lay bleeding, nailed bleeding to that cross? He looked around and said what he had said two weeks before. If I be lifted up upon the cross, that is to be crucified, the Jewish expression referring only to crucifixion. If I be lifted up, I will draw all things to myself. They were trying to kill him. And he was drawing all humanity to himself. He was spreading his human heart, that is the sacred heart. He was spreading his passions, his human passions, 
by the means of the great passion of the cross, shedding his blood for us. He was spreading the divinity of the Father and the Holy Ghost and the Son and his divinity unto the entire humanity. He was busy sending forth the Holy Ghost. He was busy telling his mother to behold the Son. I want you no longer to see me only as your son. I want you to see St. John as your son. I want you to see this whole world as your son. And now go out and make them the children of God. What should be in our thoughts as our enemies appear to be winning, as our enemies appear to be destroying us? Let us go out and people the earth. Let's go out and people the earth and bring the Holy Family, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost manifested in human flesh. Bring it out to the ends of the earth and conquer the world for Christ. That's what we have to do. This is what must be done in our time. God manifests himself, the divine manifestation. And he must manifest himself, especially in the family, by which the family shows God's goodness and God's love, and especially the fact that God shares himself. We must share our faith, share our goods, share our, 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 our by means of charity, especially the charity of telling others about Jesus Christ and about the answer to the troubles of our world and, to, to, and about the lies of the modern wickedness and that our Lord is about to have her vic his victory through the Blessed Virgin Mary. She's going to have her victory very soon. And many people don't understand that, don't know that, even though we should all know it because it's in the divine prophecies. But we still don't all know that. So we've got to manifest that. Let us make sure that Christ be the manifestation. God the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost be manifested in our families, which are centered on God. And that we human beings are supposed to manifest the knowledge of God by knowing and communicating the truth. Manifest the love of God by spreading the infinite love of God throughout the world and living it in our lives. And then to serve God by building His kingdom in our own homes and building His kingdom in our workplace, building His kingdom in our cities and in our world. And we go around, we go about, we travel, we go out and bring Christ to souls and souls to Christ. And by this we have a divine manifestation. So wish you there a happy feast of Epiphany and a brief Epiphany season. And God bless you all there. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.